Hi, I'm Melissa, and I'm a woman who has been forgiven of much. I've been very reluctant and hesitant to share this part of my life, and I pray that as I share that people will find forgiveness for themselves, that people will know that they're not alone. And actually what prompted me even sharing today was about three or four days ago, someone came to me and basically said that they had a dream and I was in their dream and this person was stuck and isolated in a room. The room was empty and there was nothing there and they were just really, really broken and, and distraught and basically I was standing outside that door of the room knocking because I could feel this person's pain or sense this person's pain in their dream. And they knew that they should have opened the door, but they felt like they couldn't because maybe they didn't, they didn't want to be vulnerable. But as I prayed and as I thought about this person's dream, you know, there are times in my personal life where I have felt like yeah, I'm alone in a room and nobody understands. And the Lord places people in our life so graciously to minister to our needs at different times and different seasons in our life. And basically, there are people that have helped me through very difficult times, but I had to open the door and be vulnerable to let them in so that the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit could use someone to speak into my life and to bring the healing that I needed through the power of the Holy Spirit and through God's Word. So maybe you are that person in a room that feels alone and feels isolated and no one will understand what you're going through or what you've experienced in your life. And I'm speaking to women in particular, but also men who have maybe struggled in this area. I have been forgiven of much, as I stated before, and there is a passage in Luke chapter seven, verse 36 through 50, and it reads like this. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in a city which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at me in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of anointment, appointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs on her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, he would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him. For she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have something to say unto you. And he said, Master, say it. There was a certain creditor which had debtors, the one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he who he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast judged rightly. And he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Seeth thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with tears and wiped them with her hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came, has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil you did not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore, I say unto you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he saith unto her, your sins are forgiven. 
And they sat at the meat with him and began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgives sins also? And he, he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. What I love most about this story and this parable is that Yeshua is so forgiving that he looks at people who have sinned with the greatest of compassion, with the greatest of love, that he can see past the mistakes, past the ignorance, past the error that people have fallen. And he can look and he can see the sincerity of heart for wanting to receive forgiveness. And in my life, my sins have been many, and this passage is something that I held on to the most when I came to the Lord, because I rejected myself so deeply because of the things that I have made, the things that I have done to separate myself from the Lord, from His love. In my opinion, I felt like I had done things that were so unforgivable, like have an abortion because I had grown up in the church, because I did know what the, the Word of God said, because I did um, grow up in a Christian family that taught about the Lord. So with all that's going on, um, my heart is breaking for women in the church in particular, because all that's going on in our nation with the abortion laws, abortion is absolutely wrong. I do not condone it. It is something that I regret doing to this day because of the fear, because of the fear of man, because of the backlash, because of fear of poverty, because of the shame, because of the condemnation, because of the self-hatred and fear of not being loved and fear of raising a child on my own and fear and the shame of, that it would bring upon my parents and my family um, if having another child out of wedlock, you know, what that would do to my family and, you know, fear of being ridiculed and fear of just being poor and not having the means to take care of this child and not having the support of this child's biological father in my life that I literally made a decision based in fear and fear of man what are, what are people going to think of me you know what am I going to do now I'm, I'm in college and you know I I'm going to lose out on my education and you know this man already doesn't love me and I can't I can't do this to myself I I got I had the opportunity a few years ago to share my testimony for the first time publicly with a group in New York um, at the Orange County Right to Life um, under the direction of Wendy Wood at the time and I shared publicly for the first time that, yes, I am an overcomer of someone who had had an abortion in the past. And the Lord has just been so gracious to me that he's allowed me to have four children subsequently. And um, when I rededicated my life to the Lord back in 2003 or 2002, this is one of the things that I, I had confessed, you know, before the Lord and asked to receive forgiveness for. And I repented and I was so broken and I did receive the Lord's forgiveness. And in 2008, after being married and, you know, being a pastor's wife at the time, um, my husband and I, we, my husband, we had gotten pregnant and I was pregnant and I was so excited about being pregnant again um, and at, at the third month mark I had a miscarriage and um, 
I went through a lot because a lot of emotion aroused in my heart at the time about that miscarriage. I felt like God was punishing me for the choice of having an abortion in the past when I was younger. And um, I felt like God was punishing me when I wanted this child so deeply and I wanted this child so desperately and I felt like he took it away or allowed it to be taken away. And I felt like my emotions were stirring so deeply that I was so broken and just being haunted by having an abortion that the Lord was punishing me. And that those are the things that, I, that were going through in my mind, you know, if you hadn't done that, maybe the Lord would spare the life of this child. And when I did share my testimony openly in, um, in front of this group with Orange County Right to Life, there were so many women after I shared that came up to me privately after the fact and said, thank you. Thank you for your transparency. Thank you for you know, talking about it and giving me a voice because I have been suffering with this in silence for so many years and afraid to share because I'm afraid of what people will think about me. And I'm thankful for the healing process that the Lord is doing in my life that I'm becoming more bold and more unafraid of what people will think by me sharing about the great miracles that he has done in my life. So I'm speaking to those women who are silently suffering in, in churches and in synagogues and messianic congregations in at home who have feel who are feeling the shame and the condemnation from a choice that you've made in your youth and maybe in your early adulthood who have felt like you couldn't turn to anyone for help. I'm speaking to the man who may have caused the woman to get an abortion out of fear of how am I gonna provide for this child or I don't really love this woman so just get an abortion and, and do away with it. I'm speaking to the single mom who, you know, made decisions like this in the past and who are deeply, deeply sorrowful and are filled with regret and are beating themselves up and people who are still carrying shame and condemnation that the same way that this woman in Luke, the woman who was sinful, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, he loves you. He sees the repentant heart. He sees the grief. He sees the isolation. He sees the loneliness. He sees just the hiding and the shame and the condemnation and the self-loathing that the self-talk, the negative talk that I can never be forgiven and I can't even share my testimony in, in the open because what are people going to think about me? His love is real. You know, Ephesians 2, it talks about you were dead through the, trans the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work amongst those who, who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of the flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead through our, trans through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus in Yeshua so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus for by grace you have been saved 
through faith. This is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. So I'm boasting right now about the faithfulness and the goodness of God because I was dead in my sins and dead in my transgressions and far away from Him, far away from His love. It was my actions and my carnal flesh that was separating me from His love and, you know, my rebellion and my sinful lusts of, of this world that were separating me. But He looked down with mercy and had mercy on me and and restored me and is restoring me to who he created me to be and the same for you that if you are dead in your sins and if you are far away from him he loves you enough to call you by name he knows you you are fully known by him he knows what you have need of before you even ask he knows the forgiveness that you need for your sins. He knows how you are suffering and beating yourself up and he's saying, come to me, you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest, that you need a savior and that's Christ Yeshua. I remember, you know, laying on that abortion table in Planned Parenthood and feeling like you, Melissa, you know what you're doing is wrong and you're still making a choice and just, him having mercy when I was so far away from him to still bring that conviction of the Holy Spirit and that small voice that said, no, don't do this. And I literally remember waking up from that procedure and weeping, crying hysterically, uncontrollably, and the nurse in the room trying to console me and I couldn't be consoled. And I remember my best friend at the time, Christy, taking me to my dorm room on my college campus and, and literally hugging me and embracing me. But she had to go on with her life. And I just remember being isolated and alone in that room and knowing that what I had done was horrific. I had taken matters into my own hands. I had not trusted the sovereignty of the Lord. I had been just so dead and so I felt dead inside because literally that's what had happened. I had committed such a horrific act of taking a life, an innocent life, and not giving that that child an opportunity to live. And I just think about, you know, my son, my eldest son who is gonna be 21 this year and I think about just the circumstances surrounding his birth as well and you know I was not living for the Lord and I was separated from God and the graciousness that God has shown towards me and towards my son who is doing Bible studies on his campus now and you know when people told me to have an abortion with him and because I wasn't married at the time, I think about this world would be missing someone so special and so unique. And that's what happens every time a woman takes matters into her, into her own hands in terms of doing this. Like, the situation in my life was not perfect. It was horrible. I was in a broken relationship with someone who did not love me, who did not care about me, who didn't even want the child, you know? But I imagine sometimes, you know, what could this child be today if I would have just trusted the Father and come to Him sooner instead of being the judge over that child's life. And I know that there are women who are hurting in the church today because they took matters into their own hands and just even the discussions that are happening and arguments that are happening in political parties right now that you know women who commit these acts are murderers and yes it is murder but it's also our job as believers to be redeeming 
to be redemptive, to be restorative, to not condemn people to hell because Yeshua, we can clearly see in Luke 7 and we can see clearly in Ephesians how his love and his mercy is what has kept us and what has restored us and we should in the church as believers do the same for people who have done this act of, of committing an abortion you're forgiven we should have those same redemptive qualities as believers we should be known by our love we should not be known for our hatred we should not be known for condemning and pointing the fingers we should be known as you know what yeah you fallen short i have fallen short and now let me show you the power that christ has done in my life you know there's a quote that i read one time and it says the only reason to clean up the past is to create space for new beginnings and the only way there's space for those new beginnings is for our hearts to be purified and Christ when he comes in with his love and with his embrace our hearts are purified because he gives us a new heart he writes his word on our heart that we don't sin against him anymore he gives us a new heart he gives us his heart he gives us a heart for the things that he loves he gives us a heart for the things that he hates and he makes us a new creation when we are in him so I'm thankful for that redemptive work of the Holy Spirit that has changed me, that has made me a new person because I'm not the person that I used to be. And I'm far from perfect, but I'm thankful that each day I'm walking closer and closer to Him the more that I open that door to him in my life in areas where I feel alone or isolated or misunderstood that I can open the door to Christ and to others that he places in my life to walk in the freedom that he so desires me to walk in. I just want to reiterate that I do not condone the act of abortion. It's wrong. It is murder. And I was a murderer. There's so many scriptures in the Bible that I can see that, like even with Moses, like you think about his life as a child, this Pharaoh, you know, going after babies and this spirit of murder and trying to cut off life prematurely. And he was spared from that. But even as he grew, just a circumstance happened and he responded in, in anger and he murdered someone. I think about how ironic, like your life was spared from being murdered, but then you turn around and murder someone. But then God, but God, you know, when we do things that are against his will, he still redeems and still restores us and still uses us to help bring deliverance to other people. And I'm so thankful for that. So again, I'm a person who has been forgiven of much. And if there's someone out there, if you are hurting, if you are broken, if you have been hiding this shame from a parent, from a spouse, from a friend, from a pastor, from a congregation. There are people and there are resources for you to receive help and healing. You're not alone in the silent suffering. And there are people who can empathize and help you to overcome, to get to a place of healing and acceptance and receiving the forgiveness of God. And if you are a woman who is contemplating abortion, I just admonish you, please don't. Please don't. That life inside of you, it matters. And God has a purpose for that life, for that child. You may physically not be able to take care of that child, but there's people, there are women who are desperate to have children. There are women who are crying out 
to be able to raise a child in love and in a loving environment who want to be mothers so desperately. I think about even my own life now, you know, my husband and I are, are, are finished having biological children, you know, and I've always, we've always talked about, you know, foster, fostering and, and adoption. There are families who want to be parents to your child. So you, there are places you could go, like My Choice Pregnancy Center in Orange County, and there are people who are willing to help you financially, emotionally, spiritually, to overcome and to to come alongside of you and help you to not um, be alone. I pray that something that I shared would be an encouragement to you today, that someone who is hurting and feeling isolated and feeling condemned would feel freedom in, in Christ and Yeshua. I pray that you will know that even though your sins are many, that there's forgiveness in, in Yeshua and he loves you and he wants to restore you and he cares about you so deeply and the enemy wants you to take the life of a child. The enemy wants to stop the purpose of that child. The enemy wants you to have blood on your hands. The enemy wants you to live in shame and condemnation, condemnation for the rest of your life. But Yeshua says, I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. And when we find our acceptance in him, he loves us so much. And I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my husband. I'm thankful for the children that the Lord has blessed me subsequently to be able to have. I have four beautiful children and a husband who has been extremely supportive in just my overcoming process of just receiving the love of Christ and that I have a new start because of the power of the Holy Spirit and the work of Yeshua on that cross he died for my sins and I'm so thankful that he loves me I love Yeshua so much he has forgiven me he has given me a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance, a sixth chance, and I'm sure he's gonna give me more chances when I fall short. And I'm just so grateful for his love. Like like Mary Magdalene in scripture, you know, she followed hard after the Savior. She had been forgiven of much. Like the woman that we read in, in, in Luke, she had been forgiven of much and she loved the Savior so much and she made it a point to dedicate her life to following Him wholeheartedly. And that's the desire of my heart is to share about the goodness of God because He can change people. It's Him that changes people. It's Him that restores people. And it's Him that gives people a new life. And I'm just so thankful and that can be you too if you choose him. So I just wanna pray as I close out this video, Father, if there's anyone out there who is hurting and who is broken, that you will meet them where they are, that you would just through the power of your Holy Spirit, reach down and touch their heart, remove the brokenness and the pain, remove the suffering, remove the anger, the self-anger, the self-accusation, remove the self-condemnation and, and shame, remove the self-rejection and the self-bitterness bitterness and the self-loathing. And Father, I pray that you would restore them. I pray that you would heal. And I pray that if there's anyone out there who is contemplating having an abortion or suffering in silence, Father, that you would give them a way out, that you would provide a place or a person or an organization in their in their close proximity 
to be a help to them, Father, that they would know that this child inside of them has purpose and life and that there are people who will come alongside them and, and pour out the love of God on them and this child and that they can receive your love and your forgiveness to know that they too can start again and it's better to choose life than to choose death. In Yeshua's mighty name. I'd also like to recommend this book, The Missing Commandment, Love Yourself, as a powerful resource for anyone who is hurting. This book was given to me by a very close friend and it's been such a blessing to me to help me to overcome just some of the pain in the past and just the wrong decisions that I've made and being able to see myself through God's eyes and that I'm not the mistake that I made and that the Lord loves me and cares about me. And I pray that this would be a good resource for you as well. I'd also like to add, you know, there are severe, severe consequences for having sex outside of marriage. You will regret it, trust me. There are so many ramifications that come from not being in a covenant relationship with a man between a man and a woman, and so many things like soul ties and sexually transmitted diseases and just that's just to name a few of the consequences but even the the pregnancy outside of wedlock you know there are so many consequences and just the grief and the mourning that comes from not being in a covenant relationship and and having sexual relations with someone else and you know the lord is trying to protect us in his love from those from those consequences because they are harsh and they are hurtful and they um, can be detrimental so i also wanted to just um, also state that if you are pregnant right now and you're partner is encouraging you or coercing you or um, pressuring you to have an abortion, you don't have to have an abortion. Um, if your boyfriend is threatening to leave you because um, you're going to have a child and you're not married and he doesn't want it, trust me, he does not love you and um, the Lord will provide for you. Just don't be afraid, you know. Um, I also wanted to just just state if you are hurting and you need prayer or you need help finding resources in your area to overcome the pain of, of an abortion or if you're contemplating having an abortion or you're in church or you're home or you're somewhere suffer, suffering in silence you know because um, you've made this choice please email me um, I'm providing my email address so that you can, I can help you find resources in your area to get the help that you need and the support that you need or the counseling that you need to overcome the, the pain and the isolation. So um, just feel free to email me and if you need prayer in this area or if you need, you know, someone to talk to about it, just um, reach out please. I'd also like to give you a powerful resource that um, Wendy Woods from the Orange County Right to Life had given me. She had given me this documentary called MAFA 21. It's M-A-A-F as in Frank, A and the number 21, MAFA 21. And it just tells the truth about abortion and just the history of Planned Parenthood and so on and so forth. That's an amazing and excellent resource to give to someone who you may know that is contemplating having, a, having an abortion. And there are places in New York and in, in Tennessee that I know of specifically that will help women who have just found out that they're pregnant and they need help. Um, in Tennessee, the New Hope Pregnancy Center in Cleveland, Tennessee, it's right on Wharf Street. They, there are loving staff that are there to, to, to come alongside of you. Um, Save the Storks, it's, it's an international organization that is also willing to help, as well as Orange County Right to Life in New York. Um, also My Choice Pregnancy Center in New Windsor, New York. 
There's loving staff there that will just come alongside you and be a help if you are contemplating an abortion or you need to give your child up for adoption or if you just need guidance on where to move forward. So I pray that what I shared today um, is an encouragement to you, that you know that you're not alone, that you're not in, in a room by yourself having to deal with the pressures that you're experiencing alone, that Christ is at the door knocking and he wants to come into your situation and he loves you so much and cares about you deeply and he is waiting with open arms and he's forgiving and loving and kind and gentle and he's trustworthy and you can trust him. So be encouraged in Yeshua's name.